All right, all right, come on. Get your head in the game. <clears throat> Supernatural is probably my favorite TV show. And now I know you can go on about how I don't have taste or how I should watch better TV shows, and you're probably right. I really, really do love this show. Of course, part of that probably has to do with when I got into it. I was going through a really hard time in my life and at some point just sat down and binged the entire show just to kind of escape everything. Flash forward from 2017 when I got into it to 2021 and I've seen the shows multiple times now and it honestly just never really gets old to me. So I figured now with the show concluding all of its 15 seasons with over 300 episodes, why not go back to the beginning and talk about the start of the show back when it was good, starting with what I consider to be the golden age of superstars. Supernatural and some of my genuine favorite seasons of TV, seasons one through five, aka the Kripke era. Supernatural Season 1 is actually a really solid start to the show. I do think it suffers a bit for me by not having that much of a concrete storyline, but in its place we get a ton of great character focused one-off episodes that build up something much more important than the show's mythology, and that's the dynamic between Sam and Dean. That being said, when the show's mythology is built upon, it's actually really, really good. Episode 11's Scarecrow is fantastic at thrusting the season's overall story forward, and episode 14 actually decides to thrust over the overall mythology for these first five seasons forward in a really great way. Both of these episodes are some of the best episodes of the season, not just because they shove things forward, but the fact that they're just super well-written episodes. The season one finale is pretty awesome too. It's a really fun episode that again, thrusts the story forward for the season and probably the show overall. Unfortunately, it still doesn't wrap anything up because the season doesn't have too much of a concrete focus. So it ends up feeling more like a mid season finale than an actual season finale. It just leaves us on a really big cliffhanger and I don't feel like I came away from the story with any true resolution. That being said, this episode is a huge catalyst for both Sam and Dean's characters going forward. And it's really, really good to see how they'll start to evolve into the characters they become. That's honestly where season one manages to, to soar. Even if there's no real story to speak of and the ending may feel a little too open-ended for a single season of television, the season still manages to lay the groundwork in both mythology and the characters in Sam and Dean. It does such a great job at selling you on these characters that you really can't wait to see where they go next. Season one is an absolutely fundamental season that lays the groundwork for everything that comes after, and I think it's full of some amazing one-off episodes that are some of the best of the show's entire 15-year run. So so that's why, despite the fact that I still really, really wish the season had a more coherent and cohesive story arc, I can't give the season anything lower than a glowing recommendation because it is such a fundamental building block to the entire show. I'll go ahead and say the best episodes of season one are episode nine, Home, episode 12, Faith, and episode 22, Devil's Trap, with the worst episodes being episode eight, Bugs, episode 13, Route 666, and episode 2, Windigo. It is pretty funny that both the best episodes and worst episodes sometimes follow each other. I think season 1 overall is a great season of television, and I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the true kickoff to the amazing seasons 1 through 5, which I feel like is season 2. Season 2 is such a giant improvement over Season 1, not only in episode quality, but in storyline quality as well. The season has some all-time classic episodes and some fantastic storylines that are strewn throughout. There is rarely an episode that I did not like in this season, and I think that's really, really cool. The season also has some mini storylines going on throughout it too, so that even if it's not always focused on the main storyline of the season, you're never really bored. Like, there's a small arc of around three episodes that details Sam and Dean's run-ins with law enforcement, culminating in them 
and going to prison. It's really, really cool. The season as a whole is a lot more story focused than season one. Don't get me wrong, the season is still majority monster of the week. They make up about 11 of the show's 22 episodes this season. But there's a bit more of a driving force here, and episodes will occasionally have no real one-off threat. We'll focus on something more tied into the mythos. I think season two is a perfect middle ground between making your own story a central part, but also having a decent amount of one-off episodes that a lot of people really liked at this time. That being said, I do think there are some issues with the pacing of the season. The first 10 episodes are jam-packed with story, with around seven episodes being almost entirely planned relevant even if they are one-off episodes and then in the second half of the season they just really slam on the brakes barely touching on it until the final two episodes i think if it was paced a little bit better i'd love it a lot more i just really could have used more story in this chunk it really felt weird how they just stopped caring about it i'm pretty sure that's because showrunner eric kripke said he started not caring about his own plot line that he developed but maybe he could have switched it into something new that would have been a bit better, I think. The season has a great expansion of lore as well. We get introduced to Hellhounds, Crossroad Demons, and Deals with Demons, and the Croatoan Virus, which all builds a bunch of uneasiness as the season wraps up with a finale that actually feels like a finale to both seasons 1 and 2. You could probably look at seasons 1 and 2 as one long 44 episode season, as season 2's finale is just such a great cap off to the first real storyline of this show. The continued development of Sam and Dean is also really fantastic. Dean gets some great stuff as he has to come to terms with losing his father and the deal he made, ultimately culminating in him making his own deal to save Sam. Meanwhile, Sam's powers are expanded upon and he has to deal with the fact that he might lose himself just as every other special kid they've run into has turned evil. It's a really great dilemma that both these characters go through and I think they're capped off amazingly at the end with again, Dean making his deal and then Sam kind of going in a darker direction, teasing some interesting things for seasons three through five. Other great things that come from season two of the show include the introduction of Gordon Walker, who I think is a wonderful antagonist for both Sam and Dean, and he adds so much to the season. I honestly would have been fine if he was more of the main antagonist of the season, but still, Azazel's pretty fucking great. The Roadhouse and Ellen and Joe also expand Hunter characters a lot and give a nice feeling of family to both Sam and Dean, as well as giving the show a bit of a centralized base of locations, which the showrunner then proceeded to burn down in the season finale because he decided he actually, you know, hates home. Also, the trickster. I could probably make an entire video on why he's such a great character. Supernatural Season 2 is everything that great about Season 1, up to new heights, and made even better. Despite some story pacing issues and some issues with the direction as a whole, it's a really great time and I think it's made even better by the continued development of Sam and Dean and the expansion of this world's mythology and lore. Best episodes of the season include Episode 22, All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2, Episode 12, Night Shifter, and Episode 17, Heart. And I think the worst episodes include episode 10, Hunted, episode 4, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, and episode 11, Playthings. Don't get me wrong though, all of those are still solid episodes and better than any of the worst episodes that we get in season 1. So for overall season 2, love this season, such a great, great time. I'll go ahead and give it an 8.5 out of 10. Could be even better if I just didn't have as many issues with the overall story pacing as I do. Supernatural Season 3 is a pretty depressing season, but not really in the way that you think. Sure, its storyline and tone are really, really depressing and down in the mud, but it's also depressing that the show never really got to complete its third season. Due to the 2007-2008 Writers Guild of America strike, the season was cut short from its ordered 22 episode count to only 16, with the showrunners having to barely come together and figure out an actual end to the storyline. It almost didn't get to that point, if talks hadn't been negotiated when they were, the season would have ended almost 10 episodes earlier with the episode 12 which is Justin Bellow. This is not unlike what happened to seasons of shows like Flash and, and Batwoman and other similar shows that wrapped up super early in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, this does impact season 3's quality just a tad bit, but it's insane that the season still managed to come out really, really great in spite of this. Because in some ways, I think this season surpasses season 2. Almost every episode of the season is great, although there are a little bit more poor ones here than there were in season 2. They're mainly in the first half where I feel like the season is really struggling to find its groove. That being said, from fresh blood onward, the season picks up immensely, not only in episode quality, but also in lore. Episodes like Mystery Spot and 
Justin Bellow are two of the best episodes of the show, and there's still a ton of other fantastic episodes like Dream a Little, Dream of Me, and A Very Supernatural Christmas. Unfortunately, as strong as the latter half of the season is, it's let down a little bit by the final leg of the season, feeling very rushed. While Justin Bellow would have been a letdown as a finale for not really resolving Dean's deal, it does feel like more of a natural climax than what we get in the actual finale. I do want to say that the finale we do get in episode 16 is fucking fantastic and does genuinely make up for the pretty rushed final chunk of episodes. It's a miracle that the episode came out as solid as it did because otherwise season 3 probably would have been a little bit weaker than season 1. The season is a very nice middle ground between what we have in seasons 1 and 2 and what we end up getting in 4 and 5. The lore and stakes of the show are definitely ramping up but at the heart of it it's still two brothers in over their heads as a ton of stuff unfolds around them. There's still a bunch of Monster of the Week episodes that only sort of barely tie into an overarching storyline. Speaking of that storyline, the storyline of season 3 is a really really great idea. Coming off of a two season long villain like Azazel, you really have to do something better, and while we do have a villain here in Lilith, I think the true threat of season 3 and the overarching story that we truly care about is Dean's impending death that no matter what they do, they can't seem to stop. It makes it so the season can always touch on its main plot without it ever feeling like something's being stretched out, as well as having a ton of one-off episodes that still feel like they're tied in somehow because you still always feel like Dean's going to die. Now as I mentioned earlier, season 3 is the shortest season of the show, coming in at only 16 episodes, and I think it both helps and hinders the season to be shorter. On one hand, we get a much more concise season, but on the other hand, the season is plagued by the final leg feeling super rushed, and the first 7 or so episodes being just kind of pointless and aimless. Basically, you don't really get the pros of a shorter season when a season is cut short. You just end up with some loose strings that don't really go anywhere. There's a ton of storylines that they even had to drop and reschedule for the following season, which I think also kind of helps and hinders the season. On one hand, setting up those and following through with them in future seasons is a neat idea, and when you're binging them all, it's really, really cool that everything builds up to another season. But on the other hand, it kind of leaves season three as a whole feel a bit too open-ended with a ton of lingering questions that you know you never know if they're going to get solved. Watching this season as it aired back in 2007 to 2008, I could think about how I may have really disliked it, but coming out of it now in 2021, it is a pretty solid season of the show that I really wish got the full 22 episode order because if it did, it'd probably be one of the best of the show, greater than it already is. Other great things about season 3 come in the form of two characters who I will just now talk about really briefly. Ruby, who I'll talk about more in season 4, is a great character and I really love the dynamic she has with Sam and Dean throughout the season. Next is Bella, who was apparently a conflicting character when the show aired and is still a bit of a conflicting character now, but I actually really, really like her. And she comes out feeling like the biggest victim of the cut storylines because I feel like she was supposed to be getting something much greater than what she ended up getting because what she ended up getting really does feel like an afterthought. Overall, Season 3 is a great season that rivals Season 2 and I think almost surpasses it. Unfortunately, as great as both of them are in the episode department, they're both just really held back by some storyline issues. With Season 2, it was just forgetting the main storyline even existed, and with Season 3, it's the fact that the main storyline had to ramp up and end super early. That being said, it is a great idea that they killed Dean. It would have felt super unearned if they'd come up with some way to save him. The best episodes of Season 3 include Episode 11, Mystery Spot, Episode 12, Just in Bellow, and Episode 16, No Rest for the Wicked. The worst episodes of the season include episode 4, Sin City, episode 6, Red Sky at Morning, and episode 13, Ghost Facers. None of those episodes are particularly awful, but they're just pretty weak and weaker than probably anything in season 2. Overall, season 3 gets an 8.5 out of 10. Now just a bit of a warning, I'm about to lose my mind, because I'm about to talk about my two favorite seasons of TV, and sure, again, tell me to watch better TV, frankly, I don't care. Let's go ahead and talk about the season that, depending on the day of the week you ask me, is the best of the show, Supernatural Season 4. Supernatural's fourth season is its most expansive, insane, and best season yet, as the show changes its lore and introduces so many new things. I mentioned while talking about season 3 that it was basically a middle ground between seasons 1 and 2 and 4 and 5. The first two seasons are a road trip show with a larger mystery being unraveled, and season 3 is largely the same, but the story starts to increase in scope and scale. And season 4 feels like the true transition from a family road trip show hunting monsters into being an epic sci-fi story. And it's so fucking cool! 
Season 4's best strength comes from its season premiere, Lazarus Rising, which is not only my favorite season premiere of the entire show, it's probably my favorite episode of the entire show. Again, like season 4, ask me on any day of the week and the answer is probably different. Dean's return from the dead could have easily felt unearned and disappointing after his death in season 3, but they frame it in such a way that you have no idea what comes next, and the entire episode hits you with one mystery after another. Season 4 I think has one of the best overarching storylines of the show, and Season 3's was already really, really solid. It worked so well because it was more of an existential threat than a main villain, and while 4 does still have Lilith as its villain, it's also got the looming apocalypse as its existential threat and the release of Lucifer. The show manages to tell such a thin story over 22 episodes by having multiple seals that need to be broken in order to release Lucifer. I really love this because it allows the show to do a really cool one-off episode and have that be a seal that advances the plot. You may think you're watching in a Monster of the Week episode and then out of nowhere Castiel shows up to talk about how this is important and going to be one step closer to unleashing the devil himself. It could seem repetitive, sure, but it makes it so that there's a ton of plot relevance throughout the season without them stretching out the storylines for too far and it becoming boring. Having Lilith and the angels and demons breaking seals behind their back makes it so you don't have to have the villain fight the hero in every episode, but it still feels like the storyline is progressing in a meaningful way. The season also has dynamic character arcs for probably every single character. Remember I mentioned Castiel? Yeah, he's introduced this season, and he gets a fantastic character arc, especially for someone just introduced in this season. We see him start out by obeying Heaven's every order, and by the end of the season, he throws it all away to subvert the Angel's plan to start the apocalypse, which, by the way, the Angel's working with the demons is probably one of the best plot twists I've seen in television. It's just so fucking cool. I love it so damn much. And the fact that they introduce it in like the final episode of the season and it doesn't feel like completely out of nowhere, it just, it blows my mind how well it's done. Dean and Sam also go through amazing character arcs that end up splitting the two right down the seams. Sam gives in to his demon blood instincts and starts using his abilities in ways we just haven't seen yet. He's manipulated by Ruby, who acts as a devil on his shoulder. I mentioned her in season 3, and while she's great there, she's even better here. I really think the actress here is a bit better than Katie Cassidy was in season 3, which, no disrespect to Katie Cassidy, she's great, I just really prefer this Ruby actress. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Dean has to grapple with everything he did while in hell, as well as his brother going AWOL. Dean contrasts with Sam by having the angels want him instead of the demons. Castiel acts as a nice foil for Ruby on Dean's side. They have a devil on Sam shoulder and an angel on Dean's and it's so so cool. I think both of these storylines are fantastic and neither character is remotely the same by the end of season 4's 22 episode run. Season 4 also manages to tie the entire show together. It starts off with a ton of loose ends and confusing plot lines that don't really merge together, and they take that and explain so much, even going as far back as to explain what Azazel was doing in Sam's bedroom all those nights ago. It leads to a truly great finale that again has an amazing twist that the angels and demons are working together, as well as the fact that again, the final seal is killing the villain of the past two seasons, leading to everything going completely fucked. Also, Season 4 just has the best damn episodes in the entire show show. There is not a single episode this season that I have any real major issues with. I think the closest thing is the introduction of their younger brother, Adam, which just kind of feels out of nowhere. And there's also a couple one-off episodes that just aren't as good, but still, this season is so damn good and consistent, and the storyline is fantastic. There's even other great things like Alistair and Uriel, who are two of the best minor antagonists of this entire show. And I, I just, I, I can't. I can't praise this season enough. I love it so, so damn much. The storyline is fantastic. The episodes are some of the strongest of the show. I love how all the characters are dynamic. Please watch Supernatural, at least seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You're getting some really good TV by this point. The best episodes of season 4 include episode 1, Lazarus Rising, episode 13, After School Special, which is a one-off episode, and episode 21, When the Levy Breaks. The worst episodes of the season is Jump the Shark with the introduction of Adam, like I mentioned earlier, and episode 11, Family Remains, and episode 4, Metamorphosis, which are those two one-off episodes that just don't really spark as much joy in me as the rest of the season. Overall, I gotta give season 4 like a 9.5 out of 10. It is such a fantastic season of TV, and I really, really love it, and I, 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 every time I watch it, I'm just taken back, and, and I just, I love to admire how much this season means to me, and how much this show means to me at this point. Season 4 is so, so damn good. Um, I, I hear good things, I think. 
So after all that damn praise about Season 4, you may wonder what makes Season 5 so much better. Well, it's really no fault of 4, and it doesn't lower the season quality of 4 at all. Supernatural Season 5 is just the best season of the show. It's probably my favorite season of TV. From the start, we're thrown into a season that has genuine stakes and tension completely throughout. This season genuinely feels like a final season. It feels like a better final season than Season 15. It is insane how it does that. It starts by bringing back characters and plotlines from the first few seasons, and it it absolutely feels like everything has been built up to this moment. The reveal that Sam and Dean are the vessels of Lucifer and Michael respectively is amazing and it ties everything together so so well. Now we know why Azazel created Sam and gave him his powers. It was to make him the perfect vessel for Lucifer. And now we know why the angels rescued Dean from hell. It's because he's Michael's vessel. The reveal of the trickster from season 2, remember him? Being Gabriel is so damn good. It's another thing that makes this feel like a final season because they take a character we've seen a few times over two seasons and reveal that he's not just a monster who can make things wacky for an episode, but one of the four archangels. And they end up giving him a major arc with his ending in Hammer of the Gods being amazing and a true testament to how season five takes things from earlier seasons and paints them in a whole new light. Another example of this is the Croatoan virus. Something from a one-off episode in season two is a central plan of Lucifer for the the apocalypse. I think this is a truly great idea because it, this season probably could have felt a little too distant from seasons 1 and 2 if not handled correctly since the show evolved so much, so pulling stuff directly from there is such a great way to, again, make it feel like every little thing has been building up to this season. I also love how the season itself manages to feel super tightly knit together. They mention Sam and Dean are the vessels from the jump and have the two grapple with that for the entire season and decide whether or not to say yes and allow the archangels to possess them. One-off episodes are made relevant by saying their things from the book of revelation and lucifer mentions multiple times that sam will say yes to him in detroit and then in the season finale swan song he says yes to him in detroit that was set up in episode 10 of the season. It's so cool. The season also has a mini Horsemen of the Apocalypse plot going on all throughout that builds up into the creation of a key to Lucifer's cage that they need to throw him back into hell. While season 4 might have had a more thorough and dynamic character arcs, season 5 definitely has the more narratively structured and planned story. They allow Lucifer to act as a central antagonist while also having these horsemen show up minorly throughout and they're just, they're so much fun, dude. I love almost all of these horsemen episodes. That's not to say that season 5 is without character arcs though because that'd be far from the truth. Sam goes through an arc of coming to terms with who he is and making up for starting the apocalypse, all culminating with him being the one to jam Lucifer back into the cage, giving up any hope of a normal life. Sam also has to deal with his lingering anger issues as well as some self-righteous behavior that he has. One of the most satisfying things about him landing Lucifer into the pit is Lucifer's constant mentioning of how Sam's anger is one of the reasons he's such a good vessel. Sam was able to overcome all of that and take back his agency and make up for freeing the devil by jamming his ass back into hell. It's such such a satisfying and amazingly done character arc for Sam. Dean, on the other hand, has a much more emotional arc that comes with him slowly losing all faith that he might have. At the start of the season, he believes more than any of them that they'll be able to stop the apocalypse, but slowly but surely loses himself. Whether it's the horsemen of famine not being able to hurt him because he's empty inside, or seeing Sam's happiest moments are without him and his family at all while they're dead in heaven, Dean loses any semblance of faith and hope, and towards the end of the season, it all culminates in the fantastic 100 100th episode, Point of No Return, where Dean almost says yes to Michael, only to remember at last minute what he's fighting for. Castiel's storyline is extending from the end of season 4, where he fell and eventually becomes basically human by the end of the season. He's cut off from heaven and left to purely fend for himself, and even Bobby, a supporting character, gets an entire story arc about how he has to get used to not being able to be a hunter and be as useful as he liked to be. It's, it's so amazing how they manage to develop these characters in such great ways, even after they spent all of season four doing it. I think the best character bit of the entire show and season is how throughout the entire first few seasons, the show made a huge point about how it was Sam that wanted the normal life and Dean figured he'd die bloody, only for the exact opposite to happen at the end of season five. Slowly but surely, the two began to change their minds and they would end up in complete opposite situations with again, Sam in hell with Lucifer and Dean settling down for a normal life with Lisa. It just feels completely right. And I haven't even talked about the villains yet. I mentioned the horsemen are so much fun and they are. Death especially is tremendous. He and Dean share a beautiful scene in the penultimate episode that is probably one of my favorite scenes in the entire show. Zachariah is a fun little threat that comes popping back up from time and time and he has an amazing
amazing death again in the amazing 100th episode point of no return and lucifer played brilliantly by mark pellegrino is one of the most intimidating and exciting villains the show ever had swan song could deserve an entire episode where i talk about how amazing it is but it is amazing it manages to feel like a true series finale as we have chuck shirley narrating everything from the creation to the impala to what it means to Sam and Dean, and we get an amazing revelation that Sam's life has been controlled by Azazel and Lucifer all along. Sam taking back control from Lucifer and Dean settling down with Lisa, it's just so good and feels like the perfect ending for the show. Chuck vanishing at the end hints for something bigger, and I'll admit, it feels like a satisfying conclusion as he writes the end of the Supernatural books. Literally tell me this doesn't scream, it's over. There are a few flaws to season five, mostly nitpicks for me, like how Adam, their half-brother, can feel a bit out of nowhere at times and how the angels resurrecting John Winchester could have been better for a climax as it would have been more meaningful to have him as the stand-in for Michael rather than their random brother. There's a couple episodes that feel a bit rushed with two horsemen defeated in episode 21 leading to the final three episodes feeling more cluttered than they probably should but I just feel like none of them really hold a candle to how great the rest of the season is. Season 5 is the best season of the show. I just feel like this is the quintessential supernatural season and it takes everything that was set up before it and puts it in a new perspective perspective and manages to tie everything up into a nice little neat bow while also leaving more crumbs to follow. The best episodes of season 5 include episode 22, Swan Song, episode 16, Dark Side of the Mood, and episode 8, Changing Channels. By the way, all three of those are 10 out of 10 episodes for me. And the worst episodes are episode 2, Good God Y'all, episode 8, Sam Interrupted, and episode 12, Swap Meet. They're all still 8 out of 10 episodes. Every episode of this season is an 8 out of 10 or above. That's how fucking great this season is. As for my score, I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10. I can't quite give it a 10 because I do have a couple nitpicks and I don't feel like any season of television I can really give a 10 out of 10. But if I was going to give a season of television that I've seen a 10 out of 10, Supernatural Season 5 would probably get the first one. Well, there you have it. That is the entirety of seasons 1 through 5, the Crypt Key era, or as I call the Golden Age of Supernatural. One story told exceptionally well over 5 seasons with a finale that truly feels like a complete wrap up and a conclusion, and it's honestly sad that it's not the end. Next time we'll be talking about the continuation of the show with Sarah Gamble at the helm for seasons 6 and 7. So please, go ahead and join me then. And while you're still on my channel, please go ahead and subscribe so I can continue making videos like this. I love making them, and please go ahead and check out my other Supernatural videos, whether it's a tier list of the whole show, might give you some sneak peeks of my future opinions, as well as checking out my Season 15 review, where I dive into why I feel like that was a disappointing end to the show. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Awesome, I finished the video, and we can just get back on with my life, and... There's more seasons?